all the customs and everything that I know are Parsi customs. I was not allowed to become a part of a religion which I knew so much about. Right. So it is, it is, it's pretty bad. My mom is a Parsi. Internally, she wants to be, she wants to go to the uh, Chavos of Silence after she passes away. But if she does, then I will not be able to see her. I will not be able to be with her. So when men marrying outside the community, his kids are accepted. Why not girls who marry outside the community, their kids? Our Akkabas or elders began to have some mistresses. Hundred of years ago or more than that, hundred and fifty years ago. They had children. Now what to do with them? So surreptitiously, they began to take them into the Zoroastrian fold. The Jamia Jamshid quoted somebody uh, last month saying that, you know, a woman marrying a non-Parsi, a Parsi woman marrying a non-Parsi, her son is called a bastard. So it's like, you know, the moment you're not a Parsi, you're nobody. Any one parent is a Parsi, but how can you stop a kid from being a Parsi? So Risa Zurabin recently in one of her interviews that on start off said, don't restrict my options. Why? So she writes the name half Parsi. She doesn't like to be a Parsi. If you, if you feel so strongly about outsiders not being let in, what about your own? The, the child who's half at least. You cut the limb from the cradle to the grave. By birth, I am a Parsi, right. so I feel we are just dwindling away yeah. and nothing is done about it. But it's all these, you know, those top people everywhere, there's bureaucracy growing. What about on. the panchayat? I mean, yeah, they're all, you know, hypocrites. They do something else, they preach something else, mm -hmm. and they have something else up their sleeves. Mm -hmm. We are providing housing on a special footing. We provide 1000 rupees per third child or fourth child or as many child you have after after two. I think the Punjab is a little too rigid and should be a little more flexible. The scheme that the Bombay Pasi Panchayat has uh, introduced in the last six months about um, a fertility clinic where poor, rich, middle class, any any patient actually just wants to come in for a free kind of checkup. As time changes, I mean, people should change too. Why should we change the traditions? We beauty of religion is that it gives us a continuity with the past. There is no question of amending. What one would have to do is to bring a new law. We have to either allow people to either convert or, or women to marry out. Ethnicity, because that's the only thing that has kept the religion going. So the rank and file of the community certainly will endorse what I have said. In any given society, you're always going to get a small percentage of people who are quite vociferous who may say that we must change this or change that or reform this or reform something else. The people decide. We don't want to uh, press it one way or the other. Politics is the wrong word, but in this context, if I may use the word, I never get involved in the politics. I think it's a bogey which has been created basically with a hidden agenda that if you go on telling our people that our numbers are dwindling at this alarming rate, then the automatic natural response, I suspect, is let's take new people on board. All through the world, incentives are given to people to have less children. Here we have a community where, in fact, incentives are offered if you have more If you throw, open the doors of the community to all communities, then such a small community will be drowned within two or three generations, you see, and they will disappear from the earth. Uh, the gentlemen who are chiseled in, in stone around the city of Bombay, yes. and I think that um, from time to time I think it is it's up to us and I think the stalwarts of the Bombay city to, to recognize those, those people and maybe you know, do a little more about it because uh, they just hid in a statue somewhere. Oh